So good morning every day, everybody. <laughs> you see, my brain is starting. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Can I can really tell that it's Friday today? Finally, after a few weeks, is something that reminds me that I need a break, that I want to be just playing with my daughter, and I don't want to to have uh, the routine. This is crazy, but it's beautiful. Uh, thank you, everybody, to be here. I bet you guys are tired to see us. We exhausted but happy because we really believe in the power of education. We really believe that that's going to be the only way that we can change the world. And the idea to put this together and connect dentists all over the world is beautiful to me to connect my, my people from Latin America, my Colombian dentists and all South American speaking people and also all the other parts in the world that I have in the opportunity to be traveling and creating friends all over. So thank you for all of you guys that they here. And today we have an amazing uh, friend. Uh, I have the opportunity to meet him uh, in Dijon, France. Uh, he was recommended by Francesca uh, to him today and took my courses since we're talking about biofunctional occlusion, physiological occlusion. So then I have the opportunity to meet Emilio Lebeck. Uh, finally, I think I made the pronunciation kind of correct yeah, you did. after pronounce it a thousand times. It took me an entire course to just to learn to say that was no Emilio, that was Emilio. And even that if we spend multiple time together, I have to practice with him half an hour before to be able to pronounce the name correctly. <laughs> so he's a great friend. Thank you so much for being here. So let me pass it to Hamid. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Emilio. Uh, it's uh, great to uh, finally meet you, virtually anyway, but um, I've heard so much about you and uh, so much about your uh, train of thought and, and your modality. Uh, I've, of course, always heard about Dr. Legal, but uh, frankly, I'm the first one to tell you. Uh, uh, honestly, I, I have no idea um, what he stood for, so I'm really looking forward to what you have to say and teach us today. Thank yeah. you. Mm. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to, to be there. Pleasure to see again uh, Javier. Uh, as he said, we met in Dijon. It was uh, a few months ago in December. We didn't meet before. Um, I was attracted of his way of thinking occlusion for the, the geoposition with uh, tensing and having um, an idea from your, your functional position. Um, in my mind, I was uh, seeing what he, what he was doing. And I'm, I, um, I, I fall in occlusion by the way of mastication. And I saw at the same time what I can do with this process online. Uh, it's, uh, a good way to 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 improve our skills and to to be able to do more. Okay, things. so let me let me connect you with the rest of the people. Let's see what we're gonna talk today. So today, uh, Emilio had the beautiful opportunity to be trained by people that always been thinking in chewing cycles, but he went to a really deep level of understanding. And was fascinated to me when I start talking to him that we have similar approaches, that we always thinking that the occlusion is a cofactor into uh, in all the problems, systematic problems. So he was telling me stories about how patients with pain in another part of the body or dysfunction, after just in the, or after just they make the adjustments of the occlusion into the chewing cycle how those pathologies went away and how after the patient has dentistry done, uh, another dentist replaced crowns and the patient come back to the same symptomatology. So we will get to that story because it's really impressive to me. But also part of what I want to connect in this uh, topic is that even that he has this strong foundation in chewing cycles and trying to develop all the, remove all the nociceptive input during mastication, he found a niche to connect mandibular position as one of the elements to start the process. And the beauty is that he also thinking that, but he has different mechanisms to take the bites. And it's a full holistic approach with different influences of different people. But at the same time, we get 
similar to the same factor. So today we're going to develop what is going to be the principle uh, more in depth about the Dr. Legal into the chewing cycle because that's going to be his lecture. I will present it on, uh, on Friday, on uh, the 1st May. Yeah, so in the 1st May, he's going to have more graphics and videos that that is really amazing. It's difficult to it talk sometimes easy. about mastication. Yeah. Mm, yeah. It will be easier so, to understand because it's a word. Yeah. When we talk and you will make this, it's different yeah. to see what they really seen in those slopes because the dentistry that they do is focused, that is the hardest part to me because mm. it's hard to see into the mouth when the really chewing is happening into that surface without mm. instrumentation. But they develop protocols in the way to observe the face of the patient by itself during chewing cycles. And I think we can benefit tremendously to, in whatever philosophy or whatever thinking process, mm -hmm. we learn this consideration to the challenge cycle. Mm -hmm. So first, tell us a little bit about how you get involved into this physiological thinking. <laughs> um, well, uh, in fact, when I, I come up to dentistry study, I, um, I had uh, my first professor who was Jean-Francois Loret, with the body study of Marcel Legal. And um, his, uh, his guy was uh, giving us the, co the, the class of, uh, of uh, anatomy on occlusion. And first thing he taught uh, uh, to us was to, to bring us some notion of anatomy. And I can't remind, it's, it's funny because the first uh, course we attended, he came in classroom with a tennis racket. He um, came in the class, he take his uh, tennis racket and he mimic um, the gesture of uh, service tennis just to explain us the pathway of the first lower mandibular uh, molar on the enamel bridge of the first molar, the first upper molar. So we didn't understand anything by this time. Um, um, we were deeply uh, in this uh, world of mastication, but what we weren't uh, aware of what was, uh, what was the subject. And three years after, I moved in uh, one, another university. And here I discovered kind um, uh, of guidance, group function. And I said, what the hell? I, don't, uh, I didn't understand what they were saying. And it was... Uh, in my fourth year of study, so the other students have uh, facility with canine guidance, what I didn't understand, understood the, the logic, the logical approach. So uh, that's where my first question came to see what's happening in this uh, world of occlusion. Um, in this time, I was lucky because there was a new professor in, uh, in this university who was um, with um, um, uh, uh, Alain Horner. And Alain Horner is a guy who, who teach me uh, some skills from nactology. And he was a friend of uh, Jean-Francois. So we were two in the university to speak the same language about mastication. So we we came friend and uh, and I had, I enter this world uh, by this way. And few months, few years later, I passed my exam. And unfortunately, um, Jean-François Loret died six months after I passed my exam. And um, it's, uh, I practice by myself the technique of mastication. And uh, 10 years later, I, I've already met Marcel, but not uh, quite closely. And um, he went to Raynon Island where I lived. And uh, it was a great opportunity. And we met and we, we became uh, uh, approach, uh, friends. So I came back to him. And what is very interesting is because um, I have practiced by myself in my corner the mastication and Marcel evaluates with another guy, which is Roger Jorger. And uh, he, he brought me some, uh, 
little things, little details, but making the difference to to improve my my knowledge on mastication. Okay, so what is the the concept of mastication? What is the main thing that this approach uh, uh, pay attention? Okay, you know the story began in. Uh, uh, 1980, 60, uh, 1780, when uh, Marcel and uh, his buddy Jean-François were uh, sit in a class and they were watching a video from a zero nactograph. Uh, you know, the device that permits uh, mandibula to, to do the same uh, moves as you can see on patient in the same time. And they have the approach. To it's like a robot, an articulator yeah, that like simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. And they were watching uh, someone who were chewing some some food, and what the robot was doing. And at the same time, they was looking at and they were saying at themselves, but it doesn't do what we do clinically. Where when we examine occlusion, we, we ask people to go uh, in a way in out, and um, she is showing in the other side, and um, that where it began because I say okay maybe uh, our philosophy don't, uh, of um, our dentistry philosophy of of uh, watching people from a mov uh, movement. A motion starting in MIP going outside, which is um, centrifuge, is not uh, the good uh, the good way to examine patient. So that's uh, where the story started. So what you say is most people we believe that the chewing cycle starts for maximum intercuspation. No, and then but, yeah. And but then the have, circle go for the normally when we create artificial, we may from that maximum intercuspation to go out in this direction and come in. And yeah. then your studies shows that the physiology, the chewing cycle, we start to a cycle that goes out and then comes in first. Uh, what uh, Marcel and Jean Francois described is uh, that you have two phases in mastication cycle. You have a dental phase and you have a non-dental phase, uh, which is a preparatory uh, phase. So uh, we don't have to think, I think that um, we don't have to think the, um, the mastication cycle uh, beginning in MIP or finishing in, in MIP. We have to see the movement in a, a global way and thinking about uh, uh, dental phase on non dental phase. So, yeah, it just makes sense because I think when you have the spoon like me that they just bring me breakfast, uh, mm. you teeth are apart, you're not studying mm. for maximum intercuspation, then you will put the food in your mouth, and I think mm -hmm. the mouth prepares somehow to be able to do the, the it's not that we are starting with the teeth like that because in what moment we will throw the food in there, right? Yeah. So it's more like uh, that preparatory phase maybe can be that preparation that you will say, I'm going to put my food here and I'm going to yes, throw it to this even side. Even when you, you open your mouth, your mouth to smash the, the food. Okay. Because uh, uh, some sort of sensory, some sort of uh, uh, proprioceptive. Uh, yeah. Quite, I think that even has to be with where I don't remember who was talking about. Oh, John, when John was talking about how the baby looks for the nipple, I think we have the same sense when we have the spoon, right? We kind of try to look for that spoon and we will know how we're going to make the chewing cycle. Okay, so what else you guys look at it? Um, well, I have um, a procedure to, to examine my patient, which uh, is based on um, on my co-worker because one year ago I have a, an endodontist who came in my office to work with with us. Um, he didn't have any knowledge uh, knowledge of occlusion, so he started to ask me question, and I say, okay, I have to make a procedure to be clear, to be able to find the same things and to be repeatable. You know, you know. 
in a, in a sort of view. So um, what I explain to, um, to him is uh, I have to identify first the fuse, the fuse blown. Uh, it's a way to identify where is the problem. Is, uh, is it a, a TMG problem? Is it a neck problem? Is it a crack tooth problem? Is it a, a non-do problem? Is it a perio problem? Is it, uh, it can be so, so much of thing. Because in, when, he, when he first came to me and asked question, he asked question for healing problems on the rondo because on the rondo he had uh, such great procedure. I, uh, I don't know how he does, but uh, he's very great, uh, 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 Cedric. Um, he called me uh, after I said, okay, I have my, my procedure of rondo. I'm sure 100% uh, it's uh, okay, it's clean. He had to, he, he have to heal, but it doesn't. So he asked me and I, uh, I just examine and say, okay, if it doesn't heal, it's maybe because your healing process is a, a, blow, a, a fuse which is blown. And in this case, uh, what I remark is I have a trauma, a trauma, a causal trauma on this tooth, on this tooth. So I said to him, you can wait what you want with the trauma you have. On the teeth, on the tooth, you you cannot afford a good healing. So my first thing is to find where is the, is the fuse, and to identify it. And second thing I look at is the behavior behavior of the patient, because if I do I go for my procedure, and if uh, the patient have the best way I can improve his equation, but is still um, uh, going to traumatize uh, his occlusion. I think you can do some, some good thing for him, but uh, it won't heal uh, in 100% uh, of, uh, of chance. So I ask people to um, to see their behavior, to watch uh, their behavior, to be aware of what they do with their jaw in the, in the day. Uh, Often, what I can observe is when you have um, a problem of uh, whatever problem is on, uh, on your fuse, is when the fuse have blown. Um, Often, when you ask people, you say, okay, this was in this time of, uh, of the year, so when you ask more about what happened to the patient in this time of the year, the, it's not a psychological approach, but it, it uh, explains a lot of things, I think. Uh, is, um, they said, oh, there was a, a mess in my life in the, uh, by this time. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't say it's stress we brings the problems, the occlusal problems, the healing problems, the fuse problem. But what I say to patient, I say, okay, maybe in this, by this time, you have started to, um, to bite more, to clench more, and to be able the, the, the fuse to blow by this time. So my approach is not to, it's just to explain what people can do by themselves. It's a good thing to your, your work because when people come back, and say, oh, uh, if the fuse is a crown uh, fallen, they say, oh, I may have uh, clenched too much by this time. They don't say you have done, you, are, you don't have uh, done a, a bad work on. Uh, so you on educate the patient to, to make them part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. Explain sure. them uh, that can be conditions that can technically overload the bite. Yeah, and that yeah. eventually what you call the, 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 the fuse that it blows, yeah. it's talking yeah. about that weakest part of the system that is the one that I, being used. I often compare it to a sportive for running women or, or men and say, if, if you have a good knee and you have a good physiotherapist, good shoes, good, uh, good uh, uh, EPO or uh, good drugs or wh whatever you want, if you are still running 10 hours a day, 
your knee will uh, will crack it's impossible to so that's the way i explain people to to be aware of what they do with their jaw to to try to relax and not to overload the, the occlusion now during this uh, process can you tell us a little bit about and i know that but this is going to be part of the questions but i think we want to build in to know like uh, what you're thinking first so the patient come to you you're trying to find that uh, fuse I, but, I, show, I huh? show the patient the connection between his behavior on uh, overload occlusion uh, um, and uh, then i go for um, um, to a questionnaire to just to be have an idea of what uh, uh, what are the other fuses that can have be blown, but the patient is not aware of? Um, here is a most more holistic approach. I look for for um, uh, itchy scalp when people are itchy because it's uh, the trigeminal nerve who uh, is uh, the same nerve for the for the scalp. Yeah. I go on um, uh, the, to palp the internal angle of the eye. Often, when people have uh, have a point, um, a painful point here, it's uh, it's um, eighty ninety percent uh, occlusal problem or clenching. I look for earache, uh, for pain uh, pain in the neck. Uh, I also look for tachycardia and um, effortless um, pulmonary breathlessness. Uh, what was that? Um, when people are, are just suffocating because they can uh, they can breathe. They can yeah, breathe insufficient breathing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why? Because. Uh, the trigeminal, um, uh, how do you say that? Um, uh, the, the Connection? The, the, the nucleus. The nucleus. The nucleus. Of the, yeah, the, the gray nucleus uh, of the trigeminal is very next to the vagus, the yeah. vagus nucleus. So often, but I, f uh, I go very predominantly with uh, this kind of signs because uh, you have to be sure that it's not a, pro a cardiac problem too. So it's when you have tachycardia, which is not explained by, uh, by classic medicine. So um, yeah, it's on what I uh, look for is, uh, yes, we I have mean, it's a fact that when you compress the vertebral artery by the neck, you deplete the brain, and then oh. it's articles that it shows that the pressure change when you freedom the vertebral artery. Correct. Yeah. I was, I was that, that's ask. A, that's yeah. a point, but there is another point, which is when you clench a lot, you activate the nerve, the trigeminal nerve, and you have two ways in the nerve. You have a proprioception way, which is going from the outside to the inside, to the nucleus. And you can, ima you can easily imagine, uh, because we, we have a feedback way on yeah. each nerve, uh, which can explain that if your nucleus of trigeminal is very uh, impacted by uh, this uh, clenching, on always been activating, you can uh, you can have um, a repercussion on the vagus nerve. So that's yeah. the point. I have an amazing article that I eventually share with you guys about that anastomosis all going for the connection between the trigeminal, the ganglions, and with the, in the cortex. Yeah, with the glial the glial cells, mm -hmm. it, it connects. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I go for to to look for for women. We have a endometriosis, endometriosis uh, symptom light, and we have also um, irritable bowel uh, syndrome. So, on uh, something I find very often is uh, 
sensation, a feeling of nail in the in the heel. Uh, nail. When I had, hmm? What was that? Uh, so say a feeling of having a nail planted yeah. in the heel. Uh -huh. mm. uh, with when I have a lot of that signs, I say, okay, I go for uh, I go for um, more deeper in my uh, in the way of thinking. It's a uh, occasion problem. So what I can propose to this patient is um, uh, I, before I have already done the job for behavior giving uh, giving advices but when we have when i have such a um, list of problems i go to compete with uh, anesthesia of the terigo palatina fossa in the lower compartment just to to try to relax to calm the the input that uh, the uh, trigeminal nerve give to the nucleus so and it brings a lot of uh, of amelioration for people who have very very big problems. And um, here is a point where I go to occlusion. Okay. Um, how do you relate the masticatory chewing cycle with the uh, mandibular position and mandible trajectories? Okay, first I, um, I go to check and to verify the mandibular position. Um, I don't care about mastication in the first, uh, the first step. Um, to be able to, to check the, the position, I go for the first thing I, I learned is manipulation. I know it's well known to be operator dependent, but what I see, what I can observe is when um, my coworker come to my office to work with me, they, and they don't know to manipulate in the way I do, uh, which, which is one way. Uh, but they have an approach with many, many way to do which interfere to the relaxation of the muscle because I think it, it's, the, it's the key. And um, they stress the patient, they, they, they give some, some movements that uh, don't permit the patient to be relaxed. So after a training moment, what I can, do, I can uh, tell is even my wife, which is a fantastic uh, mastering, mastering in bonding, she finds the same position as, my, as I find, as my endodontics find. But he didn't find in the first time. He, have, he had to train. But now, if we see the same patient, we find the same, uh, the same position. The, the thing is, we find the same position on easy patient to manipulate easy to relax. Um, I've tried because I attend the course of uh, Francesca. Um, so I use her technique of cotton wool on cotton wool. Um, I, uh, I try it and what I find is I find the same position doing with uh, roll cotton on cotton work, I find the same position than I find when I manipulate. And I find the same position than you, you do with your tense, but on easy case. Mm -hmm. On, on uh, difficult case, uh, that's where uh, I think manipulation is not enough. I need to tense to relax uh, people, but you know, tensing it's easy to do, but it's not easy to record the bite with after you you have tense. What would uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Milio? What do you mm -hmm. consider a difficult case? Are you talking about ah, yeah, a lot uh, of joint adhesions? The, you know, it's, what, uh, what it's, constitutes a difficult? Yeah, it's a question I have uh, often. Um, 
it's something that you feel you have to feel in, in your hand. It's when you have the good manipulation, you feel you don't have to, to lift the jaw. Uh, it's only uh, you have to help. It's very... Uh, it's easier it's, to... It's very easy. It's, you, you see the patient get relaxed very in a few times. It's very... In two seconds, you can have the, Correct. You can have the relaxation. But <clears throat> even when you relax, you, that's the problem of the, of the manipulation, I think, is you have to deprogram engrams in the brain. And sure. the only way you have to do uh, manipulating is to put your finger in uh, on the on the upper teeth to be able not the teeth to get engaged together. So um, the problem is when you put your finger on the lips, you can perturb your patient on uh, that perception. Uh, correct. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's from. So <clears throat> I have a device, I a tool that I have uh, used uh, for many years too. Is what? Um, let's see, it's an interesting story. Is uh, what uh, developed uh, uh, Jean Francois and Marcel. It's um, a, a doctor which his name is Le Guern, and he was um, he. He went from the philosophy of uh, the Jig of Lucia. Um, what they remarked it is when uh, you use this device, uh, the, the jaw gets retracted. Uh, yes, it goes backward. Right. So uh, they tried to make it more, more flat. Uh, as uh, Lucas said uh, yesterday, it's the same principle of. Uh, uh, the quiz, uh, I think it's uh, all uh, interior stop. Um, uh, what they, um, they did in a second time, that was with uh, Marcel and Roger Jorger, uh, which is a buddy in France. And they go furthermore in the concept uh, just to, because they were, they were uh, persuaded that uh, the thing is the um, uh, functional position is related to the way you swallow on the position of the tongue. So okay. they, mane they, um, they try to make a place on the anterior stop to permit the tongue to be just behind the incisor. So it's a way that I think it's better than Koi's to to be able to, to have an idea of the position of the tongue and the influence of the tongue on the, on the, on the jaw position. But uh, the problem is you, can, you, you have a problem of uh, phonation. You can't test phonation. Uh, Phonetics, yeah. Device, yeah it's, uh, but it's quite interesting because in the approach, what they are doing is is to um, uh, to make uh, in PMMA uh, a, come on, an entire stuff which is entering the the, the the upper incisor, and you have a plate just behind like this, and you have a place which is ma we uh, we permit the the tongue to go uh, to go above it. Above. Above. And what he says is you have to, often you have to grind the, um, the entire stop to permit the, the mandibula to come in the good position. Often you go too much forward and you, the patient bites on the, on the slope where he should or not, and the mandibula get retrude after. Correct. So he grind, grind, grind. Um, is um, the, the, the point is to find a position where you find an equilibrium. So uh, it's the concept of a wheelbarrow, you know, to carry in your garden. So if your wheelbarrow is well, um, well uh, loaded, it will be in equilibrium. If you have uh, not well One loaded, side or it will, yeah, that's the point. So, at the end of the test, you can't find one point. 
which is always repeatable. So that's uh, the way they, um, yeah. they go. Okay, um, it's, now, a, it's an anterior the programmer of some kind and uh, creating engramming for, for a position. Yeah. Yeah. But um, wouldn't that, uh, have, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but something like that, you can engram anybody to any position almost, correct? Yeah, we can, that's, that's the point that I want to do and then we get in time issues, so we need yeah. to find a connection. Before we start with the question, let me have me make okay. a point. Go because I it. think this, this uh, interview is really unique just for one reason. Um, Emilio was taking my courses in France and I use him for level two patients, as a level two patient case. We, level two, we uh, manufacture an orthotic, we take a physiologic, <laughs> and then we, we get a neuromuscular bite, a biofunctional bite, but how, by using all the uh, postural principles and everything. And I don't, I don't know if you mind uh, that I talk about your case, Emilio. Is that fine? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Emilio, for instance, has premolar extractions into the uppers. And then if you see him when he's talking, he has a huge space into the posterior teeth. Uh, and when he's speaking, the anterior teeth are here and you can see a tremendous gap into the back. This was been one of the more difficult cases to equilibrate because I have two, two pressures. The first one, is I found a position for him and he became pretty much behind edge to edge. So imagine the gap was in the back. So then in level two also, we teach how we made the coronoplasty and the equilibration of the splints. But imagine the pressure to do it on him that he really know and understand masticatory chewing cycle. So he was transmitting to us everything that he feels. What I'm getting and building into this point because to me, I really believe in mastication, but I think, and also Milio says, uh, it has to be combined with mandible position. Because he can remove all the proprioceptive input into the bite as he had it, but he has a skeletal discrepancy. So that's why you see so much of this uh, discrepancy in the back. So his bite is really unsupported. As a fact, when we made the orthotic, the orthotic was like three millimeters high into the back, but in the front, almost not. Because mm -hmm. technically the mandible did this movement and that was put the It was a decompressive movement, not so much move forward movement, it was a decompression. It was just decompression. Then yeah. remember that in the, we made a full analysis, so we compared the x-ray. And then we noticed that the morphology of the joint also has a lot to do. Because mm -hmm. it's not the same that the compression in a shadow or flat eminence that that patient can go eventually more anterior. And that's why you see the class three patient, mostly they have many con things in common. One is the pitching, the posture of the body. The other one that we see is a kaifori pattern neck. And then we normally see flat eminence. And you see these patients, mostly they don't have that much TMJ problem. Mm -hmm. And different than class two, that they're really stiff. And that's how it is. So when we relax the muscles on him, the only chance that has that joint was they compress and keeping that slow. And in the way that we take the bites in a neuromuscular way, but we make the packing of the joint because we induce swallowing patterns during the process of we taking the bite. So now I get Emilio with an orthotic and Emilio make it the, all the courses. So I have the chance to see him in level two and three or four months before, after in level three. And I get to see what he was he was committed to use it so he is like in this thinking process of developing a research to combine the two uh connections mm -hmm. so i want that milio you explain what can be the difference to treat the chewing cycles in an habitual position and what can be the difference to adjust chewing cycles in a reposition mandible position by any philosophy i mean you know, as that you change it because you know what was the toughest yeah. part to equilibrate him is that mm -hmm. he came to a cost, cost to cost relationship into the sides. So then we trying to remove interferences. Something that he noticed is that when I did the orthotic, I already build up the occlusal planes. You know, 15 degrees mm -hmm. in excursive movement. Uh, so that uh, just what, was what I think. What I think is when you just think about. Um, 
<coughs> mandibular position, jaw position, you are in a static uh, view of uh, the condyl on uh, the way that you close and open. And what brings um, showing, showing cycle is to be able to stabilize the same condyl, but in uh, 4D, uh, in three dimension, but in the motion too. That's the point. Um, to make an example, if you think you have a good position, um, good, um, a good stabilization, a good stabilization with um, uh, posterior teeth, which is very, very well fitted in MIP. And when you think about showing, when your mandibula goes uh, on the on the side to catch the food and to uh, to um, to crush the food, you have a phase where your teeth are together. If you're, you're um, in the way that uh, almost of us have, uh, have learned, we, we ask people to, to grind the cusp, not to have any interference in, the, in, this, uh, in this movement. But if you think in, uh, in uh, 4D, the, the process of the motion of the, the jaw, you you can just imagine that if the cusp are not working, who is working for her? It's the jaw, the condyle. So it would it will overload the the condyle. If you restore the the slopes on the on the cusp, the buccal cusp to permit the jaw to be to be guided to the MIP, the load will be shared between the cusp you have uh, you have restored on the on the condyle that's my uh, but you don't think that the condo when you have like a what will define in your own case what it will define it like a people we call it long centric because when you go to maximum mm -hmm. patient you go behind but you technically function in here so when i put the orthotic on you your initial position was with your AP was, and then you develop two in cycles to that position. Yeah. Let's say that now you don't have the orthotic in place. So mm -hmm. let's say that you're gonna chew. If you start with food that is big, maybe your joint will decompress automatically because it's a fact that you want to function no, more anterior. But you know what? I'm not able to chew, I swallow. So do you think that if you're... My, my, wife, my wife is always saying, take time to eat because you... Uh, but uh, I, I know I don't use my teeth as... As, as you I suppose. Yeah. So, so then we get to the... On, I mean, the autotic, we, on the autotic, I can. You can. But you yeah, have enough I support. Can. Yeah, I have much, much support, but uh, I have to improve the, the shape of the autotic because to, to be able to show just considering concepts of medication with cycling uh, slopes on, uh, on the Yeah, but I think the structural pattern is really, really uh, uh, crucial in this situation because I think your structural patterns are so far away. You've been a perfect class one biting behind, but you want to function here. So everything that you have is interferences. That's why you cannot recruit the food. So this, I think this is when we start connecting the points and we will say, okay, how we will benefit for an orthodontic treatment that can be faster if I uh, speed it up with corticotomies to try to move the teeth with a better relationship. So, uh, so you consider, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, sorry, let's so, just move on, finish that yeah. point. Just the point that we want to do is, uh, it's important that the people, and they're gonna be able to see in his lecture, is seeing that mandible position is still being important to be able to have proper mastication. It's not mm -hmm. isolation. It's not that the patient has a bite like his, and the more it can, equilibration he can has. Be isolated. It can be yeah. isolated. Okay. So the two components. That was the point that I want to, um, um, to, to do with this. Okay. Hamid, go ahead. Perfect. Please. All right. So, um, Emilio, we're going to start with our uh, section, the fun section of the 
interview, all the questions everybody's been so I think Francesca is excited here. <laughs> chewing, vertical chewing socks. <laughs> That's good. And also, no. Francesca was a patient. That's beautiful no. because I no. have these two people that I couldn't believe. It was an mm. honor to be able to work in their mouths and see what it is. And definitely, I think oh, yeah. we have the more dysfunction we have, we get more yeah. into this. That's why we have orthotics here, our medicine, and orthodontics, and we were playing with ourselves to try to find out yeah, that's, how that's we can make this dentist, better. A dentist dream to work on another dentist, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, okay. All Coming right, Emilio, first question. Uh, tell me, tell me what is occlusion to you and, and who were your influence? I know uh, Dr. Legal is one of the ones, but no, you mentioned de definitely mastication. <laughs> mastication. So to you, no, uh, it's all about function. Uh, yeah, um, I will. I will say that uh, muscle decontraction is a point. Uh, I associate to brain deprogrammation. I think it's uh, it's very important to to make disappearing grams and to to refine the physiologic movement of closure on uh, of open on closure. And point two is to obtain simultaneous um, closure contact when uh, under slowing pressure when you swallow to be able to have the simultaneous contact that's the second you mean point simultaneous bilateral contact yeah is that what yeah. you're talking about yeah when when you swallow and last point is to obtain mastication guidance to stabilize uh, the, the the condyle in the motion way of uh, okay so just to uh, make that so by guidance you really you don't you don't think that all class one class two or, or class it's, three it's not, it's not um, a question of class one class two interferences you don't think of them as interference no, you not think at all. of some no. as, uh, as actually I met, guides when i when i met francesca first time she she always she explained very well that you have a vertical shoer on horizontal shoer but I said, and she said, um, she was right that uh, horizontal chewer don't like to be trapped in uh, in vertical ways. They don't. When you have horizontal, you don't like to be to be trapped in a vertical uh, um, from vertical way of uh, of um, of doing your cycle. But what I said to her is, when you have a vertical chewer, you can't transform very easily them in the horizontal shore, making the, the, um, the diagram of uh, showing uh, wider and to, to, to work very easily. Uh, Hamid, let, let me just explain that part. We believe yes. in, in interference class one, class two, two and three, but we mostly seem for an static point, And then we try to prevent to have those when we create an chewing pattern. When I was making the adjustment in him, they try, like a, sometimes they leave some class twos in the movement because- That's they what I understood from his yeah. Uh, speech. Yeah. yeah, so when they have this, they don't want class one in this side, but they want this slope to work together with the opposite side in some way. I mean, he will explain that, honestly, this is so complex. I talk to him and Francesca a lot, but this really, really need training. Honestly, mm. we are able to see trajectories that what we do, but this imagine that the problem is it's hard to see inside, you know? But it, it's a process. You have already to, first you have to, to, to be able to read a map on the, on the teeth to be able to say, okay, that's, that's a cycle entry uh, that mark on this one is uh, another one, on this one is missing, on this one. You have to be able to read, and after when you know how to read, you know where you have to um, to um, to get to put your uh, your plot of uh, of composite to to improve the mastication. But that, that's a point very funny because when uh, thinking about you told me uh, just uh, in the in, at the beginning of the interview that when we have Cron. Uh, the first case I had, I had was with Cron, and um, the Cron um, <clears throat> was um, patient was having a, a click in uh, in her um, in her jaw. So 
we, I remove the, the crown and I uh, adjust a provisional one, which very beautiful uh, cycle in uh, slopes. And patient didn't have any more click. I put back the old crown and click again. And I, I do the, um, the removal, the, uh, I remove each time same results. So it does an impact on the trajectory of the condyle. Definitely. Thank you. All right, question number two. Um, you spoke uh, in very detail about uh, your uh, occlusal pattern and, and in mastication. What other, uh, what other factors are you considering? Are you con looking at the posture? I, a lot of our speakers talked about posture um, and no. sleep, airway. Now I attend the course okay. of Javier, I look at. I was aware there was there was, uh, there was link, but uh, I didn't have any knowledge uh, knowledge on it. So now I'm uh, I have I am more high sharper to to see what happened. Fantastic. Uh, how about airway? Airway, <clears throat> I don't uh, I don't look at, but uh, uh, I have seen uh, the work of uh, Ravia. It's uh, it's obvious there is uh, a link. And um, if you think about the tongue and uh, what the tongue can track on uh, on the on the la larynx and uh, all this uh, this era. It's uh, talking about the tongue, are you examining patients for a tongue tie? And uh, do you perform mm -hmm. any phrenoplasty? I, I, I asked people in my initial examination to swallow and to 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 watch where the tongue is. Okay. Um, all right. Let's talk about the, the diagnostic records that you take. What type of diagnostic records do you take? And, and the second uh, part is that what equipment do you use? Uh, it will be the same question. Um, uh, I use a tool that if you don't have, you can have it because it's my eyes. But the good news is that everyone have, uh, have eyes. I so uh, it's uh, based on the observation. If you have, a, if you are a good observator, it's easy to. Correct. You could have eyes, but if you're not observant, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you, you can learn. You can learn. Um, uh, second tool is my iPhone. I take a lot of video capture, uh, uh, motion capture, to to think about. Uh, uh, how people are showing their cycle, mastica, their cycle, and to have a picture of uh, how is um, um, the, the map of uh, mastication before and after. Um, I, I have questionnaire. I, um, uh, I complete to be able to have an initial, initial uh, status of how the patient feel. Um, I pay a lot of attention to the, the, um, the, ch the change that the patient can feel uh, during the, the treatment. Fantastic. Um, so uh, you're not working with any uh, kind of uh, x-rays or CBCT or? I, I do, but uh, when I have, um, uh, dopped or where the 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 condyle can be uh, on a huge problem, but it's an easy case. Uh, I work a lot with uh, simple uh, simple device. I got you, Emilio. Um, uh, do you work with other professionals? Uh, do you have uh, do you believe in an interdisciplinary yeah. approach? What, what is very interesting is uh, the feedback of uh, um, my physiotherapist, uh, physiotherapist uh, I'm thinking uh, in Eric, I work a lot with him and uh, when he says, uh, when I fix a good position, a good job position, he says it's incredible uh, the, um, how facilitating is uh, the manipulation of the neck. He said, uh, it's, I know when you are in the good position. Yeah. When on people 
where you have trouble to find, to get a good position, uh, is able to say, no, you, you don't catch it uh, yet. Um, the, the second thing which is interesting is uh, he was very reticent with my anesthesia of, um, of uh, the pterygoidea, uh, pterygoid uh, fossa um, compartment. And when he said, um, I said him, uh, okay, let's try once. And he said, wow, it's incredible because I have a laxity to be able to manipulate the, the mandible and to do exercise I didn't get before. So now he's asking me on, on tricky case to anesthesia just before he, uh, he sees a patient. So where are you making the, the, the injection into the compartment? Uh, just behind the, um, the, the last, second molar. last molar. Okay. And behind going, the upper, and the, yeah. Behind going, the greater palatine. Yeah. Okay. And going, going, to, doing, going in the direction of the ear, the uh, the um, the low. lower part of the ear, not to not to have injury in the nerve because it's uh, if you go to to up, you can damage the nerve, so you have to be careful. And the last collaboration I have is with um, my beautiful wife. <laughs> I, and my uh, endodontist because they bring me back to omni practice and uh, i can see they can't see now the difficulties they have in omni practice and see i see i don't see uh, i'm part of their process i'm i'm not the you know it's in when you progress in occlusion uh, finally, you you are in the center of the of the treatment of only. Um, I'm not only in this position. For for them, I am part of the healing process of endodontic problem. I'm part of uh, crack tooth problem to identify why this teeth this tooth has crack and to to find the 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 fuse and to to go forward in the anali uh, occlusion analysis. Fantastic. All right, so um, can, you, can you walk us through your sequence of treatment? Um, and um, how are you, um, uh, now that you're incorporating some of the, the new things about uh, the occlusion, can you walk us through your sequence of uh, treatment with one a patient, let's say that you see like um, your own case where you see there is a, a vertical uh, discrepancy. Yeah, always the same. Um, I go for, I go to identify the fuse. That's the first point. I go to... So diagnosis first, of course. Yeah, correct the behavior because I know if I don't correct it, I will have trouble because uh, it won't help me. I go to find a good uh, position for the jaw, so that's where I can use manipulating manipulation. And if it's uh, easy, I don't go furthermore. If I have doubt, that's where I can go for um, uh, entire stop of uh, deglutition. I can go for tensing. I can go for on a, if I have um, dope. Uh, after this point, I go for a splint to to be able to be sure that's a good point of uh, for the good good position, and this is where my physiotherapist can help me to say me okay you are in good position or you are not, um, and after I go to restore uh, mastication uh, in this uh, new position on on top of your split. Um, on top of my splint, or if I am sure it's in, if it's an easy K, I can go directly on, uh, on the, the key. key because I go with composite. The magic, the, what is magic with composite is that if you are wrong, you can remove, remove it and you can do it again. You can increase, you can, you can do it uh, with ceramics. So that's a good, uh, perfect, good. Mm. perfect. Um, 
Let me ask you something. Where in your analysis uh, does facial considerations come in? Uh, do you take that at all into huh. consideration? You know, um, depends depends on the case because it, it depends of, of the uh, of the shoes who, um, which have blown because. If it's uh, TMG, I won't go for aesthetic first. I will go for position first to, to find the position. And after that, I will think about aesthetics. But I will think about aesthetics before doing my final, uh, final restoration, sure. Um, if people come for, um, for the tooth with uh, we are very grinded. Uh, often it's uh, uh, it can be aesthetic uh, approach, the first approach. You know, I think when you you have um, a patient coming for for aesthetic approach, they don't care about joints. So you have to take care about where where you can bring your um, your aesthetics. Um, if the patient is okay with that, and in the second time you say, okay, I can't do it for you uh, using mock-up, DSD, and what uh, what you uh, what you want, but in the second time the explanation um, go to uh, to TMG process because say, okay, I can't do it, but if I do it in this way, I have to give a new position for my jaw, so we have to go to to check uh, to check the job position, so all have their place in the um, treatment process, but not at the same place. But at the end, it will be the same because it's. In the, I think it's in in the approach in when you discuss with the patient that uh, you change your approach. But finally, it's always the same. You have to have a, a good aesthetic uh, restoration point. You you want to achieve and uh, making uh, your jaw uh, good position jaw to, to to work properly to be to be able to to reach this this uh, this aesthetic outcomes fantastic um do you have any questions javier no i was reading the question for the audience and then you finish with this and then okay. i we we'll go over. all right so um uh, the next question uh, i'm not sure how much are, you, are you're not doing any surgeries are you doing milio yeah i'm uh, i do implant, implantology on uh, on uh, imperio too are you currently using any of the biologic factors uh, like uh, iprf or prf or prgf are you yeah, familiar with on, the growth factors i i do the for implantology i do prf uh, of the poor prf <laughs> the of the what of the poor, right. not the rich, the poor, because <laughs> because in the, the blood, <laughs> in, the, in the blood you have uh, you yeah, have all the elements, and PRF is just uh, a way to separate. So the less can do the more. So I uh, I just uh, take the blood and use it uh, like PRF. But <laughs> I see, uh, I see, I see. You don't separate. No, what is interesting in your in, the, in your question is uh, what are the other factors that can help us to um, to, uh, to help with the, the regenerative yeah. yeah. Um, what I noticed is uh, when people have I, uh, it's uh, in protology who gave me this point of view is when you have uh, trouble with your bone when you have trouble with your gum. Um, often you find some vitamin, vitamin C deficiency or vitamin D deficiency because we, we don't eat as we, we, are, we should. Um, and if people have uh, currency of vitamin, how the hell the John can, can heal? I think uh, we have to, to think about how people um, eat and uh, the quality of the food they, uh, they, they sure. eat. So you, in your mind, nutrition first. But, yeah. uh, you, but I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm assuming that you don't have any uh, objection in, uh, in addition of some things like that, if you knew that it's going to increase angiogenesis and bring more blood supply and more healing I'm factors. I'm open-minded, so no. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, let's go to la uh, the last three questions. Uh, question number nine is, um, you know, I think somewhat partially you answered. Um, are you 
noticing any postural changes after your treatment? Are they expected, unexpected, positive, or negative? Um, not only postural, uh, postural changes. Um, when I move, um, when I change uh, very big, um, uh, big jaw position, what I notice is, uh, is ver uh, very severe difference in the posture. <clears throat> That's quite, quite clear. I jum I'm just thinking about a man who was coming to my office by ambulance. Um, he was um, bent in half in the, the office wow. to, to walk to my, uh, to, my, uh, to my chair. And when I gave him a new, uh, a new position next week, ne uh, the week after he went uh, straight. And now he's coming to the office uh, by himself on motorcycle. So, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> what I noticed, on, yeah, what I notice on the mastication point, it's uh, not so spectacular. But uh, I'm thinking about a friend of mine. Um, she was 14 when uh, by this time, and she had uh, any trouble of. Um, 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 how do you say that? Uh, your uncle, uh, which is uh, not broken, yeah, but the ankle twisted, 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 twisted ankle. Yeah, yeah, yeah twisted ankle. And um, it came so lot. Um, come, come again, come again. Um, I uh, analyze uh, a um, mastication map. Um, I add some composite to restore it because. She unfortunately she had um, an orthodontic treatment. Um, the problem with orthodontic treatment is that you um, often when you open the um, the palatal and um, with um, device such as uh, uh, quadrilix, quadrilix, you don't know, quadrilix, you know quadrilix. yeah. It's quadrilix. It's called the yeah, okay. Quadrilix. Rapid yeah. rapid yeah. maxillary expansion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, often RPE. you uh, you 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 turn the six, so Correct. the the guidance the cycle guidance is not in front of uh, what uh, it should be. And I restored it, and the, and she the the uncle twist disappeared. Um, Ten years later, uh, she because she's friend of mine, she was with her father on the phone. She said, Ah. Oh, I felt something hard in my mouth uh, on the phone. And one month later, she was complaining with uh, her father to have again some twist, uh, ankle twist. twist ankle. And I read it the, um, the, the entrance, the cycle uh, entrance of mastication, and it disappeared again. So, so let me uh, guess, you had, you had some sort of uh, uh, cones with composite, and one of those uh, snow cones came out. Yeah, um, I think the, it gives more stability on the on the jaw, so maybe connected to um, our the sense, mobility. The, the, the eyes, uh, the internal here, it, it can give some stability to the body to know where it is in the, in the space and not to fall to fall down. So this is something I, I ask people to for the relationship to the um, to sport, if they always do sport, and often people say, "Oh no, I don't do because uh, because of what?" And sometimes they they say, "Oh, because uh, I'm always falling. I I'm done. I I'm not very uh, coordinated, uh, stable. Mm -hmm. I'm not stable." And, this um, puts me a light in my uh, in my mind. Right. Uh, very well. On, on, on last thing is very important. It's not postural, but I have a case few months ago uh, when I reestablished uh, position, uh, job position. Uh, it, it surprised me, but um, uh, the man said that um, he can hear more than he can before. He, um, so. And I can see on tachycardia and pulmonary breathlessness, uh, I can see change. But I, had, I don't have the tool to say for sure it's occlusion, but 
seeing it quite a lot on often leave, you say um, there might be some correlation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic. So uh, uh, as uh, as with you and uh, many of our other uh, or other uh, invited uh, guests, uh, uh, we have seen that the the the, the spectrum of uh, this view of occlusion is very wide, and yeah. so we're asking everybody, well, how do you see the future? of uh, of uh, occlusal education in in universities you see it as something that uh, that's going to change and come out of this uh, you know very mechanical model uh, or i think we have to to think about the uh, educational process because you can't get to this uh, this view this point of view uh, in a few moments i think you have to you have to consider uh, the bite, the job position. That's the first thing that we can do in uh, in university. In universities, you can you can have a good approach of medication, but uh, after I think we have to give an holistic approach to to give the curiosity to go forward. But uh, it's very difficult. We can. I think all of, all of us we didn't get into our uh, knowledge in uh, overnight. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, Francesca has a, has a good um, a good way of uh, thinking it uh, about uh, speaking about uh, you are in five, phase one, phase two, phase phase three, phase four, dentistry. And I think it's a good way of thinking process and it's a way that you can say, okay, for phase one, you have to be able to examine this patient in this way. When you are easy with this way, you can go to phase, phase three and after phase three. I, I think in university, we have to, we have to, um, to give the opportunity to the student and to, um, the teacher to be aware of what there is behind only the mechanical point that's the point and after to be able to to give to give the the uh, give the people uh, the guest to to want more and to to improve their knowledge absolutely now um I know you didn't mention a lot. I know you, you spoke about uh, repositioning the, the jaw or the, the condyle or, um, mm. in, in certain cases. Um, thinking about the process, uh, processes in the joint itself, um, in terms of the movement, um, do you ever think about the, and dissect the movement in your mind? What is uh, the actual movement happening? Is it a rotational movement? Is it a translation? Um, and, oh. and what is the ideal position? Do you, do you ever think about what is the correct position for that condyle? Or what is the position I, that you found more consistent when you finish the cases, right? I, right. I, I find the, um, I look at the, the picture of the motion of, uh, of, um, of Ravier, so I can say, I can say no, it's a combination, that's sure, but the point is, uh, I think when people are very retreated, you can't find some rotation too. But uh, rotation is not is maybe not the the point that we should uh, watch. I think what we could watch, we we have to watch, is a position where the joint can 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 permit the patient to shoot to cycle very uh, very easily. Um, it's very easy to know because if you are not in the good position, your patient will say, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable. It will be the first thing that he will, he will say to you. Um, the second, um, the second thing is, um, uh, when you, when you get the, the good position of the, of the jaw, your bl your fuse don't blow anymore, so it, I think it's a good sign of stability. And stability is not very easy, you know, to to find because we work on uh, well, we work on patient. We 
who are uh, alive. So the, all is progressing. The old nest is coming, and uh, you have to to do with it. And uh, I think the position is evolving too. So it's not. A, uh, I, I I don't know if we we will get um, um, a definitive uh, answer to this question. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you taking a shot at it. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. All right, Javier, why don't we go ahead to the uh, question from people? Yeah, no, first, so then in reference to the occlusal pattern, I think that's what he's going to show us in the lecture because right. the other question is always the I, contacts that we need to really I, see that to I, understand. I, I, won't, I won't concentrate on job position because we have so many beautiful lectures to, to make it. I will, consult, I will concentrate on mastication, mastication pattern on how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. And lucky that I have almost his lecture that he gave me to use for future education in is amazing the material that he had. So we have one question here from Lydia Javish from Bra for Brazil. It's, it's a pleasure to see her. She's an orthodontist for Brazil as a fact. She also teaching courses uh, in Dijon, France. Um, Okay, so she say, do you train the patient with the orthotic to really chew because all the system was programmed with a big pathological freeway space? Can you measure that? Chewing gun is not going to work with the orthotic because it sticks. Maybe it works on natural teeth. By the way, I'm going to answer part of that, Lydia. It's a, den it's a chewing gum for dentures, people. Uh, yeah. Hamid, do you remember the name? Freedom. Name? Freedom. Freedom. Trident, yeah. Trident. So that is yeah. Uh, the, the gum, the gum. Yeah, yeah, it's a gum. Yeah, there is, there uh, is a gum. Uh, it's called I, I use um, I use uh, Hollywood Max. It doesn't stick to to acrylic. No. Uh, what is very smart with this gum that is is very easy to hydrate, very easy to to crash in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, not to add to um, to um, to uh, to make it soft to to, to shoe. Uh, it's very good uh, uh, a good tool because when you have to to come on, if I say to um, movement to wash to clear to clear oh, the, to clean. the piece at the end of the of the of the end point, but you give the uh, you give it and it clear all in a few seconds. Oh, that's good. But the rest of the question, so, so the rest of the question was, do you train the patient with the orthotic to really chew because all the I'm, system was programmed with a big pathological no. freeway? I, I, I used to, I was using only um, splint like Michigan's by, uh, at this time. And now I'm, try, I'm trying to apply, um, to, to get together your conception of orthotics and um, to anatomical orthotics. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my God, has that we been awesome? To, so, okay. We have come to another end of another beautiful interview. Thank you so much, Emilio, for uh, it was a pleasure to, uh, to share your, your valuable experience. Uh, Javier, that is also to Finn. It's, it's beautiful, that feeling. I don't know if the audience is having the same excitement that we're having, because Hamid and I, we you know, just talk after here, between the meetings, we're talking, and we, yes, we see, we learned yeah. this. We need to study this. And yeah, chewing cycle is yeah. something that, that is really important. I'm so sad because we were having a course with Francesca. I was going to, to Geneva to have this course in June. So I was so excited. She has the courses in multiple pieces and she make a group to make an intensive course. And I was waiting just like crazy to have it. And now it's going to be until next year. Mm -hmm. But I'm really thirsty of knowledge, man. I really think it's too many different ways to do it. It's, but, it's so valuable to find the common points, you know? Be, be, but be careful, uh, Javier, because when you enter in the world of mastication, you know there's no way back. <laughs> <laughs> so well, it's a deep, it's a big rabbit hole, bro. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I'm willing to do it. Honestly, I, it's nothing that I love more than education. I mean, I think my my journey, my life, I never stop one day. That's why I have the opportunity to meet you all, you guys. 
uh, put in effort, just traveling and knowing that you need to learn it for different perspective. It's fascinating the information that is out there. And, and I'm glad that Hamid and I, we were able to put this information together to try to, mm. to bring people close to what we read every day. So yeah, thank you no, so that's much. A, that's a great point, Javi, because uh, truly, Milio, and I don't say this just to say it, but truly one of the best part, aside from the fact we're, we're occlusion geeks and, and thirsty for this stuff, is meeting people that are like-minded and are, they're just as passionate as we are. And uh, so it's been a true pleasure. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Mm, thank you so much. Okay, thank you guys. So I will see you guys at 1 p.m. Uh, at 1 p.m. we're going to have Dr. Uh, Dara. Sure. And Dara, Dara is going to talk about integrity whole person. She's an orthodontics. And she's going to tell us how amazingly she integrates everything from lips, teeth, tongue to toes. That's going to be part, for that one. As a part of the, her lecture. I just remember all the speakers. Uh, thank you so much. We are still missing a few of the titles of the lecture. And this weekend, we have to do the schedule of the marathon. This marathon, for the one that i uh, listening now, is going to be 12 hours of lectures. We're trying to ask some of the speakers to have it recorded so that eventually it will make the workflow easy and be able to be, control any technic technical problems that we have. So many of the speakers, they send the video. We ask them to be in the range of 30 minutes. I received some tiny bit longer, but we're going to try to adjust it. Um, this is still is going to be record, but I think it's beautiful to feel the energy when people get connected. I think that's the fuel that we, Amir and I, we need because this is exhausting. And that marathon is going to be a crazy marathon, not just for us, for our families as well. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be fun. Uh, again, we're going to leave that material for you guys. We're going to try to orchestrate the schedule in a way that it works for uh, our international speakers, for instance, for Emilio. Is what time is there, Emilio? Uh, it's uh, Four. six six p.m. So six p.m. He is far there in France. He's in an island. Oh, oh, so I'm it, not. In, yeah, I'm yeah. in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Yeah, between, between Mauritius and Madagascar. Wow. So he, he's oh, yeah. eight hours apart. So we need to try to start. So guys, be prepared. Part of the plans that we have is I think the marathon will start between six and seven in the morning Miami time. I mean, we're trying to find middle, middle points to be able to help, to, to be engaged and feel the energy for the European part as well. And still, we don't have the schedule totally uh, set up. We're thinking maybe, maybe we can feed ourselves for your opinions. What you guys have advised you to do? We were thinking eventually to have three blocks because still we need to have for technical conditions we need to log out and log in uh, for the social media so eventually to try to do something like that and um, again it's not definite the time honestly Hamir and I will really need to study um, what is going to be neutral time so I don't make the people zones, wake yeah. Too, yeah too early or going too late to bed but definitely just get this is like a hurricane so get provisions taken, get your gas with car, get food, get water. Toilet paper, toilet paper. <laughs> Don't forget. I mean, yes, and get ready because this is going to be so much fun. Thank you for the beautiful people that was watching you. 